This Eureka drag show sparked a Humboldt culture war, but the culture warriors are fighting blind because of a media blackout. Unlike typical drag, the October 2022 Jefferson Center show allowed children to attend. A small group of about a dozen protesters came to the event and caused havoc, screaming in individuals' faces, taking unwanted videos and calling people. Across the nation, far-right and extremist voices have launched a significant attack against the LGBTQ plus Inside, dancers lip sync. As for the art of drag, I would like to point to the Batman effect, a well-studied psychological effect in which individuals find inner strength through an alter ego, resulting in habits of self-reflection, a stable sense of identity, and a honed emotional regulation. The experimentation of clothes, voice, and dance serves as armor. Drag is this affirming, inviting, world-opening performance. And for many of the folks who have been rejected by families, who've been told that their gender non-conforming identity, their sexuality, or themselves are not welcome in the family, drag becomes a space where people have community care, a sense of well-being and welcome. If you've gone through a trauma, you may want to change your identity because then you're disassociating with that trauma. Women feel pressure to be like overly sexualized like on social media or whatever. And so why not identify as like more masculine to get around that and get around those pressures? There could be neglect going on at home for children. They don't feel like they belong anywhere. And then they see this group saying like, we accept everyone. It's very enticing. Youth are being influenced and pushed to be in this certain demographic, which is the LGBTQ community. And if you criticize any of these people's behavior, then it's automatically labeled as hate speech. The protesters were not there to protest the lifestyles of anyone. They were there to protest the drag event for young children. Conditioning young children to be comfortable around sexualized dance routines can lead them to be in a compromised situation where they might not be on alert as, as they would have been if they hadn't been exposed to that. There's been a pattern of conflating queer people and sexual deviants in a way that children need to be protected from. There's a lot of different kinds of drag. You know, a man putting on sparkly makeup and a dress and reading a book to children in a library, there's nothing sexually inappropriate about that. But when people equate queerness with sexualizing things, then you create all of these problematic tropes where people are protesting a family-friendly drag show. Kmud's reporter characterized the protesters. There was a group of, for lack of a better word, bigots at a Redwood Pride's Halloween event. But I'm a Kmud listener responded. A significant aspect of this controversy was missing, however, which was the decidedly sexual content of the drag show. One person performed in an animal costume, looking like a life-size stuffed animal. This child-appealing character infuses performance with adult sexual expressions, including a physical come-on to an audience member and shaking his butt in people's faces. k news story failed to include this information. Inviting children to a show heavily laden with sexualized content, that is the issue of criticism, and I'm disappointed with KMUD's skewed coverage. Amy Gustin formed her own opinion by watching this footage, but the Jefferson video remains siloed on the MAGA YouTube channel Lost Coast Populist. In contrast, the Lost Coast Outpost, for example, embedded Wildberry's footage of an alleged shoplifter, informing the community conversation about the appropriateness of the manager's response. The Outpost and other mainstream media did not embed the Jefferson video, nor did they describe the performances until a media outsider lifted the blackout. In a Myrtle Town garage, Nick Flores hosts a Joe Rogan-style podcast. In the fallout from Jefferson, Flores spoke with Kaylin Rivera, who founded Lost Coast Pride, a separate organization from Redwood Pride. Redwood Pride organized Jefferson.
what they've seen in an adult show or heard that happens at an adult show, and they've applied it to a children's show. But isn't that what kind of came out with the Redwood Pride drag show? Is there was gyrating, there was the tipping. After the pandemic and everything else, it was first drag show, and I don't think it had occurred to any of the people who put it together that, you know, the tipping is part of the problem because it just makes it seem more like a strip club. I will totally agree with you, but there was no inappropriateness. A month before the Rivera breakthrough, the world's most influential news outlet emboldened humble journalists to emulate Flores and transcend progressive media orthodoxy. After activists blasted the New York Times' critical examination of transitioning children to the opposite gender, a spokesperson responded, quote, We recognize that the activist advocacy mission and the Times' journalistic mission are different. Our journalism strives to explore debates in society to help our readers understand them. Kaylin Rivera appears to understand at least some of the protesters' concerns. He's organizing an all-ages drag show with caveats. There's not even tipping at this drag show. None of the songs being performed have swear words in them. Everybody has had to turn their music in. Uh, they've already had to have their costuming approved. One of the performances that's happening is Hakuna Matata with Pumbaa and Timon in costume for having somebody do a grease number. The CR show could reveal whether Jefferson protesters changed the trajectory of humble drag. Regardless, a week after Lost Coast Populist published this footage, all five members of last year's Eureka City Council at least tacitly endorsed Jefferson signaling either that Jefferson-style all-ages drag has gained mainstream acceptance or that the city council and public lack the rigorous reporting to form an educated opinion. Eric Black, Arcata News, Eureka.